It just, it can't happen. I mean, that's, if you, if you really think about it, that's something that'll just blow your damn mind, dude. It'll just blow your mind. Because that, that makes you stop and think about it. All right. Everything in the universe can be broken down, right? But you can't, because of the infinity concept, you can't ever break something down to the smallest piece. It just goes on forever. Like if you broke things all the way down to a molecular level and then you broke it down to the atom. Well, the atom's comprised of percents, pieces, fractions. Okay, well then you gotta fraction that out. But then those fractions are also created by pieces. And each one of those pieces are created by pieces. Eventually, you, you go all the way down to where you have nothing. But you can't get from nothing to something because of the infinity concept. So think about this, dude. This is where it's a mind fuck. You can't get, theoretically you can, but in reality, you can't get from nothing to something. Because you'll never get, you'll never get past nothing. It's... <laughs> Which is like to say you can't get from the Big Bang to something because you can't get, you can't get to the next thing. In other words, are we all even really here? I'm telling you, dude, this shit gets really, really deep, man. It gets. <laughs> When you really start thinking about it, you come up with some questions that you, there ain't no fucking answers for. Like, they're just, there ain't no answers for. But see, even the Big Bang had to come from something. Because it, here's here's my thing. Like I'm Christian, you know. I don't push it on people. I don't go out preaching the word of God and all that stuff. Um, but I believe in both the Big Bang Theory and you know what they teach us in the Bible, or you know the the creation of the universe. I believe in both. I believe science is a factual, you know, way of explaining the Bible, and the Bible's a poetic way of explaining science. I look at them both hand in hand, and looking at them from two different angles helps you see a problem and solve it, and come to an understanding through different ways. But, the universe had to come from something. Like, it just, you know, I know some people will, will tell me like, dude, you're crazy, so let me get this straight. You believe in God, so you think the fairy tale of, you think that, you know how crazy you sound? You know how crazy you sound that, that God created all this and everything? And I say the same thing back then. I'm say, look, um, we're all crazy because either I think an invisible man in the sky created something or you think that something was created out of nothing, like fucking some Chris Angel magic trick or something. You see what I'm saying? Both our origin, um, our, our theories of where everything came from, they both sound like fucking lunatic shit. You know what I mean? It's like, let's come to agreement. Like, neither one of us know what really happened. Whichever one we feel comfortable with thinking, then so be it. If I think an invisible man did it, that's what I'm going to think. If you want to think fucking Chris Angel, a fucking dove, and there was the universe, then, you know, more power to you. That's just the way I look at it. But if you really think about it, the Big Bang Theory sounds absolutely as much of a magic trick as an invisible man creating everything. <laughs> and for that, what happened to the fuck? Exactly. Yeah. 
The end of Men in Black explains it all. Yeah. That's why I totally believe in the multiverse. Like, there's just no way. Like, something... We, we came from something. And whatever... You know, I know some people like to think, you know, we were... The Earth was seeded. You know, was seeded from another species out there in the universe. Well, if that's the case, then they came from something. And then whoever created them, they came from something. And whatever planet they were on, that came from something. You know, it, it just never ends. It's like the infinity concept. It just goes on all the way back to, in you know, in science, it would be called the Big Bang Theory. In religion, it would be called, you know, the creation story. But either way, you get to a point where nothing was there. But you can't scientifically create something out of nothing. Exactly. Exactly. You can't you can't go below zero. You can only come up with an explanation or a description of a number below zero, but you there's really in reality there's nothing before nothing. You know what I mean? It's it's empty. It's void. There's nothing there. Which is another crazy thing to think about. Nothingness. Like, emptiness. A void. An, a, a real void. I don't mean like a void in a storybook or something or a gap in time. or I'm talking about an actual void where there was nothing there. Like, you can't even comprehend that shit. Like, you think you can, but when you really think about it, you can't comprehend nothing being there. That's why black holes are so hard for people to understand that, you know, don't do research on them on an everyday basis. Because what a black hole actually is, is think of it like this. If you had a planet there, 300, you know, a, a 3D of a planet, you know, up, down, left, right, depth. And you just took that planet out and left an empty hole there a 3D floating hole in space with nothing in it. A void. A sphere that's a void. That's a black hole. It's literally a piece of the universe that's fucking missing. And there's nothing there. That's what a black hole is. It's something that's literally so immense in gravity that it's crushed itself and crushed itself out of existence and left a hole there. A hole in space-time. It's just, it's, it's mind-boggling to think about that nothing is there. It's just, there's nothing. Like, something goes into a black hole and it becomes nothing. It, that's why people like to think that a black hole is like maybe a wormhole or something because the your brain just naturally wants to it doesn't want to accept I and mean, it can't grasp the concept of nothing so it wants to think that some, it, it must go somewhere something goes in a black hole it must come out somewhere you know that's the way our brain wants to think about it but in reality it's it's empty it's nothing there's nothing there. It, it's you can't grasp it because our brains just don't work that way. Oh, I gotta kill these guys. Okay. Here's another, here's something else that I used to think about a lot when I was younger, is um everything in the universe vibrates at a specific frequency. And this is a mind fuck right here too. Everything vibrates at a specific frequency with millions of decimal places behind it at the specific frequency that it vibrates. No two things in the entire universe um, 
T, thank you for the follow. No two things in the entire universe vibrate at the same frequency, right? So what happens, like for example, when you split an atom, you've created two things in the universe that vibrate at the exact same frequency, which causes a chain reaction and we all know what happens with an atom bomb. So here's the thing. They theorize that if you were to somehow change the frequency of one single molecule in the whole fucking universe, you would destroy the entire universe. So, here's something to think about. Alright, in order to compensate for this and protect itself, the universe shifts. It shifts. It shifts the frequency state of every little thing based on one action. For example, if I strike a lighter, right, and I create fire, then the entire every molecule in the entire fucking universe has to shift frequency to compensate for that one action that me, little old me, did here on Earth with a fucking lighter. Dude, that is a mind fuck to think that you do an action in the entire universe to self-preserve itself alters its its frequency the, at the same time to compensate for what you just did that's insane dude but that that's honest to god what happens like it's almost un you almost can't even comp like comprehend that like this i just clapped my hands i, I altered sound right i created sound waves and the entire universe shifted to compensate for me doing this that's that's insane man that's just some crazy shit if you really think about it but that got me to thinking you know once I thought that that got me to thinking one day okay if everything vibrates at the same at, you know at, at a frequency then that means we're vibrating all the time at a certain specific frequency which means that wall is vibrating at a specific frequency now what if I could somehow cause my body every molecule in my body to vibrate at a frequency close enough to what the wall is vibrating at could I then pass through it you see what I'm saying Based on how fast I'm vibrating, would my perception of what solid, liquid, gas, all this stuff, would that my perception of that change based on how fast or slow I was vibrating to in relation to the things around me? You see what I'm saying? Like, think about that for a second. I mean, if you really think about it, that's some crazy shit, man. Oh my god, would these stupid things get off me? Get off me, Holmes! There we go. Maybe so. Think about this, Twism. If you could somehow control how fast the vibrations of your body or of a certain device, um, you could then alter how gravity affected it. In other words, you figure out how to vibrate something at the correct frequency and you can defy gravity. If you could somehow figure out how to vibrate your body at a different frequency could you defy gravity and levitate and why is this dude following me 